But if we do that and you just lay out and get beat by 50, okay, we're in the wrong division. Right. And you have the wrong mindset, which we need to talk about during the academy, not right now during the game. Like, we're not, I'm not saying that, that tournament if you can't handle yourself. So this is related, but the boring stuff yeah. is the stuff that separates the good players from the great players. Right. You know what I'm saying? Where the, the great players have, they make sure all you all the fancy stuff, and that's dope. But they also have a good mastery of the boring stuff. Right. And I think one of the big issues is we are so wrapped up in the flashy, fancy stuff. And we'll look at Kyrie and yep. look at Kevin, look at KD. You know where I've seen Kyrie and KD also? In the USA basketball training video. Yes. Yes. Working on the boring stuff that y'all roll your eyes at, the boring drills that y'all roll your eyes at. They're doing that stuff. How do you live a better shooter if you're not shooting? Better shooter more like, wait, how do you think Steph and Kyrie and, and those guys got better? It's, they shoot the ball. They probably train. To where it's second nature. Yeah. Where it's not, they don't have to put a whole lot of thought into the shot. It, it just happens in the flow in the game. And so I think a lot of times, even parents are guilty of this, where they're like, I don't know if this stuff is challenging enough, but Last game, your kid dribbled the ball off their foot three times out of bounds. Let me explain something. This is you bring that up, man. So we talk about that right there. That a couple of things that trigger. That's one. I ain't challenging enough. We didn't do this. My last team did this. We did this and this. That's your last team. There's a reason you're over here. So obviously something didn't work. Number one. Number two is parents again. What's challenging to you? Like you just said. I feel more like I'm. I'd be upset if my kid blew four or five layups in games wide open. Right. So I'm challenging him right now to stop blowing four or five layups. So I'm gonna blow the whistle when he, he blows. He, he misses the first two, so I can, we can break that habit right now. So I'm trying to help them get better. Right. That's why we're moving like this. That's why we might move a little slow in Israel because you need to move a little bit better. Pete. So we bring um, John. Yeah. Coach John. What up, John? Yeah. What up, John? Yeah. Um, Hansberry. Hansberry. Florida. Yeah. John comes up here and does a camp with us. First time we did it, we had a bunch of people, and we had different levels and stuff, mm -hmm. and we had a bunch of parents that put their kid in the most advanced dribbling level. And I'm going to tell you that they embarrassed some of y'all out there <laughs> because – John's going through what he sees as basic progressions for somebody that's mastered their dribble. And some of y'all kids couldn't, some of these kids couldn't even keep up with the most basic part of these progressions. Right. But their parents think that they're advanced. And so they're struggling with all these progressions. And he's trying to teach y'all hesitation dribbles and stuff like that. But some of the kids didn't even have the basic stuff because there was no emphasis while they were training on the basic parts of it. And they're all, look, they're going to get these fancy show-stopping dribbles where somebody falls down, breaks their ankle, they dance on them, hit a shot. But they're struggling mightily with just parts of the progression that right. he was going through because they didn't have the most basic parts of it. And so that's what we're saying. And so when we're sitting there looking at it, yeah, we focus on some of the boring and remedial stuff because I'm going to be honest with you, nobody else is. Other people aren't focusing on it, and you may think that this kid has a good handle on it or a good grasp on it, but it's not really the case. But that's why sometimes you see them working on stuff that you think is boring or isn't at their level because – one of the coaches has seen something in game like, nope, we got to go back to the drawing board on this. We're working on chess passes here. Yep. Mo and I have discussed it. We've been down to tournaments and we're sitting watching one of our black team or forgot what team it was right. where they're struggling with passes. They're just lofting, lofting shit in the air. It's not really going anywhere. There's no zip on the passes. They're not getting to where they need to be. They're just hanging passes out there for somebody to steal. Right. Body, language, body language bad after you throw it, like yeah. breaking down, yeah. do, it, do it four times in a row. And they're not stepping into the pass. It's just the, the most abysmal passing you'll ever see. And these are kids that we had put up a little bit higher because right. we're like, we need you to be there. What were we working on? passes right we're working on getting passes down 
because the kids showed us that it looks good, but until when it gets into a game, they'll fall back into bad habits. So we got to go back and nail that piece down. And that's the academy difference. We take these games. We might be disappointed. Man, I really thought that these kids were going to do better this tournament. I had higher expectations. But you take that, and that means we're heading back to academy, and we got new stuff to work on. Right. right. That doesn't mean it's the end of the world. Is this really for me? I'm going to have my twilight of the soul and stare in the mirror and figure out what my basketball (laughs) future is and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? This dark night of the soul kind of thing that you're going through. That's not what that means. We need to go back to academy. We need to work on it and get better so that we can reload and be ready for the next game. That's what the academy difference yep. is. Yep. It's not all or nothing. Your kid had a bad game. That doesn't mean they're going to be benched the next seven games. And it is something that we've talked to the coaches about. It's because the kid doesn't show up here. doesn't mean, unless it's behavioral stuff, we need to make sure that they're getting some kind of reps. Right. But at the same time, we need to make sure that we're not just forcing them to get reps when it's actually hurting them because that can be a thing too right. where a kid mentally isn't ready to be out there to get the kind of work that they're getting or get the workload that they're getting that's being demanded of them that can damage a kid too and so we're balancing the playing time but we could take it back to academy and work on it and it is a balance because sometimes winning is part of the lesson well yeah you're trying to win you're learning to win you know when we try to win the right way Right. We lose the right way as well. Remember when we were not throwing chairs on the floor and sliding across it? It's a learning lesson every time. Right. So that's where we're at. I think right. we talked about the small group training. Let's do one more conversation about the academy okay. and just lay down the main points about it. And I'll start and you jump in. Okay. All right. So our signature program is Basketball Academy. Our Basketball Academy program right now goes two nights of the week, Monday and Wednesday. We're probably going to be adding more times as we move throughout the season. Basketball Academy is really focused on, we want to nail down the the basics of the game. Before you move on, before you jump on the court, even if you're between Jay and the other season, let's get your basics back. Right. So we're going to focus on those basics and really getting good reps with the basics. On Wednesday night, we've sectioned it off since we have a bigger space to work with where we're doing a lot of drill and station work to focus on individual aspects of the game. Monday night is a little bit more high intensity, competitive, and really pushing the action. Um, But it is almost a year, it's a year round basketball camp. With some updates to the website and a couple of things I'm working on on the back end, we're going to be adding more curriculum based stuff to it so that you guys we'll be able to actually get progress and see and track progress of kids and stuff like that. That's something that we're actually building in the background. But again, it's a year round basketball camp. It's a basketball academy and there is a team component. So when you join academy, you can join our classic basic academy, which is you get those two nights a week Mm -hmm. and you get trained. And if you have another team that you play for, On the weekends, you come back to Basketball Academy, train with us. Right. And then we have our Academy Plus Teams feature, which is now you're on Basketball Academy and then you're on one of our Basketball Academy teams. And it's pretty traditional how they'll go around and play in tournaments and leagues and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So those are our two services. With Basketball Academy, the idea is you show up as you are, come in and ready to work and handle your business and get better and build a better player. Now with Academy Plus Teams, it's Focus on building a better player, but now you have a competitive element so that you can really display the skills. And so one of the things I want to talk about is displaying the skills because that's what the competition is for. The idea is for us, our philosophy is we practice the skills, we refine the skills in the academy, Mm -hmm. we practice them on team practices Mm -hmm. for the academy plus teams, and then on tournaments, you display the skills so we can see where they're at in a live game situation, and then we take that information, bring it back to academy, and now that's our plan for the next. You've week. even done videos on that. You've done videos where you, you've talked about it, clips of the game where they're moving the ball. That's all academy work, right? So academy work, and so that's what basketball academy is. It's a monthly investment. We've had, we do have a weekly option, but it's still a monthly investment. Yeah. We just taken the monthly price and broken it up for to pay us on a weekly. So it's for people that can that if if it makes more sense for them to pay us every week, that's fine, but it's still monthly investment. 
Right. And that's what it is. And that's what Basketball Academy is. That's the simplest way I can put it. Now, if you're part of regular Basketball Academy, are you on a team? No. <laughs> if you're on Basketball Academy plus teams, are you on a team? Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> you need to show up to Basketball Academy. And that's what it is. Does that mean that you're exclusive to us? <laughs> I think that for me, there's a delicate balance because we have to be fair to the kids that are in academy on the team plan, but we also want to be fair to y'all. For us, our priority is going to be our teams and our basketball academy kids. So you have to have a strong communication with the coach if you're going to be playing for different teams and expect us to, because we're going to, we're going to still do what we do. So if you're on our basketball academy plus teams program, and you got multiple teams that you play for, cool. I'm cool with that. But understand that that means we're going to have to bring in another player that we can get that's going to be consistent with us. 